Okay, in this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of the confirmatory factor analysis capabilities of the Jamovi program. And Jamovi is a uh, freely downloadable open source uh, statistics program that uh, you know gives you a lot of conventional statistics as well as a few bells and whistles that you might be interested in. And, and so the focus in this particular video is just demonstrating how you can carry out confirmatory factor analysis with this particular program. Uh, if you want to download the program, you can basically go to this site right here. It's uh, www.jamovi.org, and I'm on the download page, so you can easily download it and install it. So the data set that I have is actually uh, data that was first uh, or originally in an SPSS file, and I was able to import it with no problem into the program. And so we have basically, we have three measures, three scale variables measuring uh, prejudice, three measuring uh, intergroup contact, and then we have uh, three measuring intergroup anxiety, and then we have some other variables reflecting um, you know, basically additional prejudice and, and uh, additional beliefs. But we're gonna mainly focus in on creating or and testing a three-factor uh, model. So to do this, what we're gonna do is click on factor, go down to confirmatory factor analysis. And when we click on that, uh, we this little uh, box opens up and within this box, we can start specifying our model. And what we specify on the left will start to uh, fill in on the right. So I'm going to start off where it says factor one. I'm just going to type in prejudice. Uh, That's going to be our first uh, factor. I'm going to hit enter there. And then I'm going to drag these three variables over. So there's the first one, the second one, and then the third one right there. Uh, I'm going to add a new factor. And I'm going to call this, uh, we'll just call this contact. And then I'm going to drag these variables over as well. So there's the first one, the second one, and then the third one. So you can see as we're uh, filling in or dragging over, uh, these tables are starting to fill up. And so we'll do a third factor as well. So I'll scroll down and I'll just call this uh, group anxiety and hit enter there. And we'll move these variables over. So there's the first one, the second one, and then the third one. So that's the basic model that we're going to be um, testing. So you can see, again, all of these have filled in, and by default, um, basically the uh, the latent variables, in this case, prejudice, contact, and intergroup anxiety, um, their variances have all been fixed to one, so that's by default. And uh, these other values right here are basically the covariances among those latent factors. And up here we have the unstandardized um, path coefficients or uh, factor loadings, and significance tests associated with each of those. Now, if I wanted to, um, instead of uh, uh, setting the variances of the latent variable to one or fixing the variances to one, if I wanted to scale them in relation to um, an indicator variable within the model, uh, I can easily do that by just going down to this options box right here. And you can see the default says factor variance is equal to one. So if I want to click on this button right here, it says scale factor equal to scale for the first indicator. So uh, basically the first indicator in the set is going to be the, the, the uh, variable that is used as a reference variable. So we have in this case uh, prejudice two right here. Um, that uh, factor loading is fixed to one. There's contact two fixed at one and intergroup two, that's all, that's fixed at one. And so now uh, what we get are the actual variances for each of the latent variables as well as those covariances. So um, that's uh, how you would do that. Um, next up, if we want to, um, um, let's say we wanna add residual covariances, uh, basically having uh, correlated uniquenesses, we can do that very easily in this box right here. So let's say that I want to um, allow the uniqueness for Predge 2 and let's say Contact 2 to Covary. So I'll click that over there. And so now that's being added into the mix. So, um, so the, now that those are in there, um, we can actually take a look at our, our model. Let me just see up here. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's take a, a look at the model. So we can do that by clicking on path diagram because it's a little tricky just doing this all looking at the table by itself. So if we click on path diagram, you can see this is the model that we specified. So you can see that we have the dotted lines are basically 
uh, the uh, factor loadings that are fixed to one. We have this correlated uh, errors right here, correlated uniquenesses, and you can see right here that we have the correlations among the latent variables as well. Um, if I want standardized estimates to be included in the tables that we see right up here, um, I can easily do that just by clicking under the estimates and clicking on standardized estimates. And so now you can see the last column contains the standardized estimates. So, um, so there you go. Um, also, uh, other things to kind of pay attention to, uh, you can see that down below we have our model fit statistics. And by default, we got the CFI, the TLI, and the RMSEA. So we got all three of these. So if we want the uh, uh, SRMR, the AIC, and BIC, we have to click on those. But you can see we also get the chi-square test. So here's the chi-square test right here. There's CFI, TLI, RMSEA. Uh, in this case, all of them are indicating a good model fit. If I want to click on this one and uh, these right here, I can get those um, those estimates as well. So now you can see that we filled out this particular box. Um, if we want modification indices, we can click on this box right here and it says highlight values above three. And so those are basically, um, uh, you know, potential additions that may improve the fit of the model. If we want uh, confidence intervals uh, for our tables above right here, we can easily click on statistics, confidence intervals, and we can get those uh, interval estimates as well. So there's um, you know, again, for our unstandardized estimates, these are the 95% confidence intervals for those uh, estimates. Same down here, there, uh, there's our estimates and then our 95% confidence intervals. So um, at any rate, one other thing to note is by default, uh, the program, in terms of dealing with missing data, defaults with full information maximum likelihood right here. If you want to exclude cases list-wise, you can do, uh, you can click on this, but it's not terribly advisable um, to do that, um, and that's probably why this is already set for uh, full in information maximum likelihood. So at any rate, that is just sort of a quick overview of the confirmatory factor analysis uh, capabilities in the Jamovi program.